Folks, last week I had the extraordinary opportunity to sit down with legendary actor Robert Duvall. Duvall, now 90, has appeared in some of the most iconic movies of all time. The Godfathers, Part 1 and 2, Apocalypse Now, Network, MASH, and Tender Mercies, for which he won the Academy Award. Bob and his wife, Luciana, were gracious enough to invite me down to their beautiful ranch in Virginia for a conversation about acting, his relationship with Marlon Brando, and his new film, Twelve Mighty Orphans. Robert Duvall, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. It's an absolute honor to talk to you. Well, thank you for coming all the way down here to Virginia to talk to It me. is absolutely uh, no trial to come to your beautiful yeah. farm thank you. and your beautiful house. How, how many acres do you have here and how many horses? Well, we have one horse that's about 32 years old, but he looks like 15. We have 360 acres. Is it important for you to not live in Hollywood? To, to not be in Los Angeles or New York? Oh, well, I, I lived in New York, and then I would go to California and come back, but uh, I don't care to go to either place now. I like it out here. It's pretty quiet. Do, do you like people? Yeah, I do. Li I like characters. I want to hold a definitive character party someday. <laughs> You're invited. <laughs> <laughs> you have, you have well, I'm honored. I'm honored. Yeah. I'm honored. You say you enjoy... I've, I've read that you enjoy being a character actor, you think that's better than being a leading man. Why? It seems like more work, because a leading man just gets to show up and be himself. A character actor has to have a character. I've done both, and, but uh, I, like to, I like to do characters, yeah, definitely. How do you first approach a character? Like, is the character's intention within the scene, what he, what he wants out of the scene? Because I, certainly... I just follow the script, you just, you know. The thing but I'm how do you open up the script and how do you, because um, anyone could follow the script, how were you taught to actually um, approach the truth of that character in the script? I just, I just follow the script, one scene to the next scene to the next scene and just see where that goes, you know. I had a conversation recently with Anthony Hopkins about how he approaches the character and he said exactly the same thing. But I'll, I'll say to you what I said to him, you make it sound very easy. But certainly there has to be more than following the script. What is it you are doing as an actor to uh, stand those words up off the page? Well, I, I talk, you listen. You talk, I listen. Just like we're doing now. It boils down to that's the beginning and the end of it, like right now. You tr try not to play the result. But you can plan certain things. Hopefully, and if it doesn't work, you know, an emotional thing, but if it doesn't work, then uh, it doesn't work. But if it works, it works, you know. But there are different ways you can go about getting to certain things, you know. Your, your first film, famously, is as Boo Radley right. in To Kill a Mockingbird. Right. Horton uh, Foote helped me get that. Horton Foote, the great playwright. Boo is essentially the subject. Um, the off-screen uh, subject of so much of the film. It actually starts off with, like, this is the summer we decided right. to try to get Boo Radley to come out. And you're not seen until the very end of the film. Right. It's a distinctive moment. Um, it's, it's a very... The performance is, is very halting, very tender at the same time. It's a very innocent figure. But you don't say a single line. Was, did you ever have a line? I, I, at the end... When they're leading me home, I, and we're going to take you home, and I say something like, where are you taking me, or where? Something like that was all. But they cut it. They cut the line. You've said that Gus McRae, your character from Lonesome Dove, is the personal favorite of your characters. What is it about him? Just the, uh, I don't know, the, com the complex nature of his character. You know, he's... Uh, he said, how come we kill all the, the guys that were good guys to begin with? You know, he, he, he had a certain visionary in a certain way. I walked into the wardrobe room one day on Lonesome Dove and said, boys, we're making the godfather of Westerns. Because I was fortunate enough to be in Godfather 1 and 2 and, and, and Lonesome Dove. You know, I, they were the two biggest things in the last part of the 20th century, I think. And it's strange when I talk with Brando, which I didn't talk to him often, I didn't know him that well, he'd never heard of Lonesome Dove. That's wow. hard to believe. When you were doing The Godfather, did you have a sense that you were in the middle of something special? Yes, yes, in Godfather 1, definitely. 
When, when was the moment? Do you remember what it was, or was it no, just a pervasive uh, feeling? About a third of the way through. I figured well, this is something special. I, I, I know in the new film, 12 Mighty Orphans, yes. in which you, you play Mason Hawk, who was a financier for this um, children's football team in Texas in Masa the 1930s. Masonic Orphanage, yeah. And the scene that you, uh, you play in it was with your old friend Martin Sheen, yeah. Uh, who, of course, you started in Apocalypse Now with in 1979. Well, my, I understand it was improvised. Yeah, largely. well, I, I didn't have much to do. I just came on and uh, with Rooster McConaughey, who's a good friend of mine, Matthew's older brother, mm -hmm. I said, give me your daughter and I'll come in. That'll be my great. We'll just sit there and we improvise. Hey, huh? hey Doc, give me Mr. a quote after the game. I will, for sure. Mr. Hawk. We're delighted you're making our first game. Good to see you, sir. After all the years and all the talk, we finally got a football team, yeah. thanks to you. Thanks to you for bringing his coach in and his wife. How's he doing? Coach? He's doing remarkable, boys. you know, you met Juanita. They're yeah. great teachers, yeah. of both of them, and he's a great football coach. We finally got a team, right? We finally got a team, you thanks bet. to you, sir. Yeah, thanks to you. Okay. <laughs> it's a true story. It's a, it's a lovely story, and Ty, Ty Roberts wrote and directed it. And Luke Wilson, one of the Wilson brothers, is excellent as the coach. Marty's in it. Yeah, I hadn't seen Marty in a long time. Marty Sheen. And uh, it's, just, it's just a lovely movie and uh, based on fact. And I didn't realize that all the founding fathers were Masons, except... Jefferson? Uh, Jefferson. He didn't believe in secrecy. Wow. He was the only one. Are, are you a Mason? No, I don't know much about him. Do you believe in secrecy? Yeah. My own. I assume, I assume you have some secrets that you're not willing to share with us today. I'm not going to share them with you at any time. <laughs> yeah. When we come back, Robert Duvall and I watch my favorite scene of his of all time from the movie Network. Stick around.